so let's have a short continuation of the lesson last time about paging. So the basic idea about paging is dividing the virtual address space into fixed size chunks called uh, pages and correspondingly you divide the physical memory in the same size, fixed size chunk called frames. And uh, as shown here, you have the algorithm to perform memory access. Now let's have an example uh, memory tracing so that we can understand how the memory or how many memory accesses are being performed in uh, doing paging or if the system implements paging. So we have here an example uh, code that uh, uh, initializes an array of integers. So we have 1,000 element array of integers. And uh, the for loop here uh, iterates over the elements of the array and then initialize it, initialize each element to zero. If you compile this uh, C code, it, can, it will generate this uh, as corresponding assembly code. So you have here four instructions. These are the memory addresses of the instructions generated. Okay. And these are the corresponding instructions. So notice that the x86 is a CISC processor, complex instructions with computer, and you will observe that the sizes of the instructions differ. Okay. But let's take a look the let's take a look at the equivalence of uh, this assembly code to the C code. So this move instruction here is actually the one that uh, performs this assignment. So you have the uh, EDI as the base. The, the EDI here, the EDI register uh, points to the address of the array. The EAX register refers to the uh, variable i. And 4 is a scaling factor because uh, we have a 32-bit computer. So uh, you have uh, uh, 4 bytes, basically, to be able to. Uh, the integer is 4 bytes, so uh, you have to move every 4 bytes. So what, what, what this code here is, what this code here does is to move 0 to the memory area uh, computed uh, based on these uh, operands. Then the next instruction, increment percent EAX, is this one. So EAX is referenced to I, so when you increment that, so this will be equivalent. Then you have the compare long. So compare long basically test this condition. And then uh, jump if not equal. Okay. So notice that if the condition, if the these are not the EAX and this constant here is basically 1,000, it's not equal, then it jumps back to this uh, code. Okay. So let's take a look at the graph of the memory references. So in this figure, you have uh, three main graphs. So you have the first, second, third. Now the first one, the first graph, uh, shows the uh, memory references in relation to fetching the instructions. So remember that uh, for the instructions to be executed by the CPU, they have to be fetched from the memory. So this is what is uh, illustrated by this figure. So the move instruction uh, in the virtual address space, let's say, is located in this uh, area. Then you have the increment uh, instruction, which is located in this area. And then you have the comp instruction located in this area. And then the jump that equal instruction in this area. So notice that there are these are five iterations of the loop. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And this is the now this one is for the virtual address space and this one is the physical address space. So you see the relationship. So uh, this is the first iteration, the second iteration, the third iteration, the fourth iteration, and the fifth iteration. 
So for for fetching the instructions, it will require for each iteration four fetches in this illustration. Then the second figure here illustrates the access to the uh, actual data. So remember here. So you have this uh, reference here. So that move, that move instruction will require one memory reference. So for each iteration, you have one reference to the data, which is actually the array uh, array cell that you are setting to zero. So there are five iterations in this figure. So you have one, two, three, four, five. And then the last figure illustrates the access to the page table. So Remember that in the example program, we're accessing memory to fetch the instruction, then to fetch the data, and then to, feed, to fetch entries from the page table. So in the instruction, uh, during the instruction uh, execution of uh, move, right, move instruction, right, it has to access the page table that contains the code segment. So let's say that the code segment or the, the code section of the program is located, uh, is referenced in page table one. So we'll have to do a page table lookup for that. And the next one is a lookup for the element in the array. Let's say that is located in uh, some data, some global data section of your program. And it is located and is referenced or uh, maintained uh, or mapped via page table 39. So you'll have another uh, page uh, table access here. Then the other instructions, okay, one, two, three, they will be referencing the uh, page table that contains the instructions or the code section. So all in all, for each iteration of the loop, you will need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten memory references to access uh, the instruction, the data, and since we are implementing paging, access to the page table, which is also stored in the memory. Okay, so that basically summarizes this figure illustrates that uh, how. Uh, additional memory accesses are required uh, when we implement paging. So there should be a need to somehow speed up the process of looking up entries in the page table.